So a third use of parallax in astronomy is to calculate what is known as transverse velocity, particularly of stars is the use. Now, of course, stars are moving through time and space. And if we are, say, observing that motion from our sun, essentially, the star may not be moving directly toward or away from us. Instead, it may be moving at some oblique angle to us. And when we're measuring transverse velocity, what we're really measuring is the component of velocity that is perpendicular to our line of sight to the object. So if we picture our line of sight this way to the object, we're measuring this component of its motion for transverse velocity. But once again, we can find that velocity using parallax because once again, we can think that, all right, we can see this line of sight and project it right through the object we're observing. And after a long period of time, it will have moved a significant distance. And we can again observe with another line of sight. And so, of course, once again, we get a parallax angle. Now, that parallax angle in this instant is taking over a long period of time. And the object probably, if it's far away, many parsecs, as a star would be, probably has not moved a significant difference. So we're used to seeing, say, very small parallax angles for this kind of what's called proper motion. And uh, we might only be, say, five arc seconds in an entire year. And that's actually fairly large. So how do we use this to calculate this transverse velocity? How fast this object is moving perpendicular to our line of sight? Well, of course, what we're really doing is trying to make this our baseline now. And so we think of baseline in all these cases as part of a great big imaginary circle. And in this case, we are at the center of the circle. But in this case, we would also know the distance to the star. It would be so many parsecs. Let's say the star we're talking about is two and a half parsecs away. How can we use the known distance to the star and its uh, proper motion over a period of time to calculate, essentially, its velocity, its transverse velocity. Well, we do the same thing. We realize that this small angle we've calculated here is to this whole 360-degree angle as this small length is to the entire circumference of 2 pi r. And in this case, we know the radius, and we know how many arc seconds. So we will know how to do the calculation. First, we should convert our arc seconds per year into degrees. And we do that by dividing by 3,600 degrees per arc second, which gives us roughly 1.4 times 10 to the negative third degrees every year the star is moving against the background. So, of course, now that we have that, we can use our proportion. The star moves 1.4 times 10 to the negative third arc, or excuse me, not arc seconds, but degrees. And that is to 360 degrees. That motion is to this motion. As the baseline, which is what we're trying to find, this transverse velocity, as the baseline is to the distance to the star, which in this case would be uh, two pi or two parsecs as a radius. So of course the entire circumference is two pi times two point five parsecs. And if we solve for baseline, we'll be solving for this little chunk of this entire length that we call the circumference of the circle. So once again, angle of parallax 
is to 360 degree angle as the small length known as baseline is to the entire circumference of a circle. And when we do the calculation, we would get as an answer roughly 6.1 times 10 to the negative fifth kilometers, or excuse me, not kilometers, parsecs, we're still dealing with parsecs, in one year's time. Now, since parsecs are really a length and years are a time, this is a ratio of length to time, and that is what a velocity is. It's this velocity. And so now we can just convert to convenient units. We have 6.1 times 10 to the negative fifth parsecs in one year. And instead, we wish to know how many kilometers that is in seconds. How fast is that thing moving perpendicular to us every second? Well, we need to know that one parsec is the equivalent of 3.1 times 10 to the 13th kilometers. Parsecs we cancel. And then we know that one year is equivalent to 365 solar days. Years we cancel. And one day is equivalent to 24 hours. At least a solar day would be, if not a sidereal day. And that one hour is equivalent to 3,600 seconds. And everything cancels from the expression except kilometers per second. And we get as an answer 60 kilometers per second. So, yes, perpendicular to our line of sight to the star over this very lengthy period of time against a background of further, more distant stars, this star is moving lateral to us at a pace of 60 kilometers every second, which is pretty fast.